and welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rush, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rush, and we are here to wrap up this episode so I can go to bed because <laughs> it's late and I'm sick. Hey, how you doing? Appreciate you sticking it out. This is look the the way I was burritoed under that heated blanket on the couch. This is your this is your Jordan flu game. I'm your Scotty, <laughs> helping you to the bench. Thanks. No problem. I got other Pippins helping other Jordans too. Hi. They're both consenting adults. But um. I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. You satisfied with yourself? In- or, or do you feel, you know, like when you woke up three weeks ago and you decided that you were going to turn my online social media life to a living hell? Did did what happened? Yeah. Did your was your vision complete? I and I also want to know what I did specifically. It's been so long for you. This is what happens for you to want to just throw your husband to the social media wolves. I don't really understand, but I do want you to explain yourself. Um, before we get into it, not sponsored by anyone, but willing to, these were in my sock drawer. These are bombas. They belong to our oldest. Um, and somehow they got in my sock drawer. Oldest too. Child? Yeah. You're wearing your child's socks? Well, I think they gave them to her at her old school. And um, because, you know, our kids don't like to wear socks, but they're adult size. These things feel amazing. Like I put them on my foot and I was like, what socks are these that I own? Um, But uh, transitioning back to your initial question. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, I I think I'm a genius. You think you're a genius? I think I am a PR I have the potential to be a PR genius. Mm. I I think, well, one, okay, I remember what happened. I made breakfast tacos, and I made four, and I saved two for you, and I ate my two, and then I was like, dang, these are really good tacos. I kind of wish I didn't save you two, because you don't even like tacos. No, 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 that's not what you said. <laughs> What, what, what specific language did you use? You said David hates tacos. I didn't say hate. You did, you did say hates tacos. I'm pretty sure I didn't say hate. I'm very sure that you did. Uh, hate is such a... That's not even... It, it, it is a very strong word, which is why I don't know why you used it. I didn't say hate. You did. Find the thread. I will. But Find keep, keep explaining yourself. He doesn't even like tacos, so I should have eaten them. And it just went... I tagged him, his his actual handle, so I said, right, your rush doesn't even like tacos. Y'all, the thing blew up like a nuclear bomb. It was amazing. Like to this day, literally today, someone has made a taco reference. Um, And I'm just like, wow, I might have just gone into the wrong industry. I I feel like I kept, I, I, I just got your name into conversations that, you it wouldn't have been in. I feel I'm I'm owed a thank you, to be completely honest with so you. So you want me to thank you for my mentions turning ablaze. Yeah. You're welcome. People begging me to travel to wherever they live so that they can show me Look. I don't care enough about tacos for somebody Look. to be inviting me across the country so that they can I because, do. because people were convinced I've just never had a good taco. And maybe that's the case. And let's not even talk about the fact that nobody, I never, <laughs> nobody ever asked. verified, confirmed, or denied anything that you said. But people just took because you said it. Mm-hmm. Well, it this is me. this is what Monique was talking about it when you when you get when you get on these microphones, you got reach. People just took it around with it. I don't have reach. <laughs> you do have reach. Clearly, you have reach. My mentions would suggest otherwise. Yeah, I didn't want to. Are you are you proud of yourself? What the the best part was, I did that, and then my work schedule got like packed. So just that bounced. I got, just good. Just disappeared. I like posted that. Thing. Literally yelled fire in a crowded room and left. Dipped out the side door. 
left everyone was responding to me and everything and i was working i had to like i had like legit work to do i had no time because you're you're working and making my life a living hell that had been complete so you might as well go to the stuff that you actually yeah. get paid to so do like six hours later i get in there and i'm like oh dang <laughs> my bad <laughs> oh good times And someone else, like some, like people legit asked me for more. Like I was like, dang, now I got to like think about more things that I can just like throw you under the bus with. So I got a couple, not many. I'm backstabbers. I want their names <laughs> because people believe that I have this hatred. This, 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 this authority with the uh, threads team can get accounts. Thanos. You can't. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. But I tell you what, I'm going to try. <laughs> So I need the names. That is abuse of power. I need the names of these individuals. That's abuse of power. Yeah, I'm right. All power corrupts, but we need the electric. We need the electricity. You've been sitting on it for three weeks. Yeah. Why do you think we haven't recorded in three weeks? Why do you think I, we just now started doing our coffee videos? Because you were mad about tacos. I was betrayed. <laughs> Bye. By you. Um, and not only did you betray me twisting my words i say the tacos are overrated i don't hate anything i just i've you eaten you i've eaten your tacos yours you've eaten my taco i have <laughs> <laughs> i have <gasps> devoured your, your, your tacos i'm too sick for this i'm too sick for this um yeah you'll eat tacos but like you won't let me take a picture of you matter of fact tacos. your tacos are Okay. The only tacos that I'll eat. Oh my gosh, you eating other like food truck tacos? No, nah, they're too messy. I've gotten you to eat a few food. I just I feel like I I deserve an apology. Okay, I'm glad you. Feel I need that you. Way. I need you to tell me you're sorry. I'm not <laughs> for lying. Number one, I did not say you hate tacos. I said, on Cat Williams Internet, I'm you lied. Gonna look it up because I I would not. I don't think I would say hate. How do you search a thread? And then you tried to lie and say, I don't like sweets. You don't. That was a lie. I do like sweets. You go through Burt's, Burt's, Burt's. Burt's. <laughs> Woof. But I bought you that cheesecake. You ain't touched it. Now I got to throw it out. I know. I'm actually upset about that. Yeah. I kept forgetting it was in there. But I asked you for a cheesecake or honey bun and you bought me both. I didn't ask you for both. I asked you for one or the other. Oh, well, excuse me. I will make sure. Oh, so when I ask for sweets, you're trying to look out for me. But when I'm minding my own business, you want to drop lies on the timeline. I'm, and send the, you said this was three weeks send the thugs after me no way i can scroll through three weeks of threads and i didn't pin it if only you had had uh bookmarks back then you still don't have it do you yeah okay the threads team looks out for me if they looked out because you know i got a, i got a direct line to adam if they looked out they would have given it to I have you a, the first row I, I have a direct line to adam as he said okay which I wish he hadn't said that because I don't. Number one, <laughs> but people aren't going to believe it now. Somebody tagged me. I think Dimitri, mm -hmm. Lose Ball Boys, formerly, you know how the know. people call Twitter um, X, formerly known as Twitter. So Dimitri, formerly known as Lose Ball Boys, he and Freak Time were still going on about the bookmarks today, and he was like, "Yo, Rush, can you call them?" <laughs> and I'm eighty five percent sure he was just joking, but I'm like, "No, I can't." There's a part of him that was serious. They're probably still um, upset at me for okay, the whole. You actually, released a statement about. I did release a statement about tacos. No, I, I was on a emergency pod with Tone and Jared. Shout out to the Bench Mob Entertainment pop, Podcast and the Stop and Pop. And they asked me if I wanted to address the controversy that the mayor hates tacos. And that was my first actual statement addressing the matter, in which I call it salad on a tortilla. Yeah, which also <laughs> triggered people. So you you set people up too, like you set yourself up. It doesn't matter. I had been I taken so much shit. I was like, I don't. You know what? I don't care. I feel how you want to feel about it. Because it's so funny. We try to tell ourselves the threads were different from the other place, <laughs> but yet let somebody have a controversial opinion of tacos, and, and, and all that stuff goes out the window. We are all the people same. are talking about holding special elections. I had I rival, know. I had rivals planning campaigns against me. Look, they threw me in there. They said I was trying to take your spot. 
Trojan horse, man. You try to take me down from the inside. Oh, I can't find. I feel like I've been scrolling forever. Okay, what else you got? I, I, I'm waiting for my apology. I'm not giving you one. You're not going to apologize. No. You said you feel like I'm your old apology, but I no, I I am old. You're feeling I I don't I don't have an apology for you because I'm not sorry. You're whack. That's what you are. Okay, I'll take it. A whack taco eater. <laughs> okay. Um. Do you want to switch it up? Do you want to do NBA threads questions at the beginning rather than the end? Sure. Cool. Because I put this out a couple of days ago. Um, uh, Steve wanted to know what is your favorite thing about being a mom or a dad right now what is my favorite thing um I don't know that I have just one pick one I just I really just love their faces mm. um just looking at their because they're all in different stages. Right. Just looking at their faces and like remembering like their original face and, and <gasps> the stages. Fat, pudgy yeah, faces. The stages their faces have gone through and like where they are now. Like our oldest, just like sometimes I'm in awe of the types of conversations we have. And it's like usually in the middle of it. Like she'll be saying, she's saying something to me and I'm listening, but I'm just like, wow, this person used to be a baby. Um, and then even, even Savi today, we were talking about something and I was looking at her face and I was just like, well, like you're such a big girl, but I know I'm going to look back at pictures of her face in this moment. And like, this is going to be a baby face. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Sonoma, she just rounds it out because like she's legitimately the baby. So she re enforces the fact that like there are no more babies after this so like mm. this is the last like round face this is the last squeaky voice this is the last you know baby um oh, she's up <clears throat> so yeah i think that right now that's my favorite part just looking at their faces and just seeing their old selves but also like seeing their future selves and like the the moments when they're all next to each other and they're happy playing around and it's like seeing how similar their faces are yet how yeah. different they are um i think that's that's one of that's my my favorite part yeah i would say mine is uh is being able to develop uh unique relationships mm -hmm. with each of them so like Salas, our oldest, we're starting to talk about different things now, mm -hmm. like much some relatively mature concepts. Um, but just the randomness, like a lot of times I'll just ask her a question just to see how she processes it. And I can hear her like, um, like I can hear the wheels turning and then, you know, she'll respond. We talk a lot about music, you know, we, I'll introduce songs to her and see how she, if she likes it or not. And, you know, if we really like it, we'll try to memorize it and then recite it back as it plays. So that's, that's a lot of fun. And, you know, I like to rough house with the younger two, I rough house with all of them, but the younger two seemingly always want me to pick them up and throw them somewhere or toss them or turn them upside down. Me, me, me. Um, but the greatest thing has been them. I think, if it makes sense the the two smaller ones learning to appreciate us because Savi's been in daycare for a while now, but Sonoma has now started to go to daycare. So they're, they're away from us for six, seven, eight hours a day. So when we go to pick them up, and it's probably a selfish thing, but the way they just like run to us, like Sonoma's like, Titi, Titi. Yeah, this will like spread across the, the classroom to me and Savi will do the same thing. Although now, she runs to her sister first mm -hmm. and then, and then me, but just the joy. And that's a lot of what I saw when we just had solace years ago. And I would come home from work and she would like, and I would come up the stairs if you guys were in the loft and she would like waddle over to me or run to me if you guys are downstairs. So just, just the different relationships that I'm developing with, with the three of them, 
um, and, and being unique, I think is my favorite part right now. And they're, they're really a, um, I used to think of cigars or basketball or uh, PlayStation as my release. And those things do still serve their purposes. But really, at the end of a workday, like seeing them, talking to them, tossing them onto the bed, like that's become a release for me. And I think that that's um, something that I've, that I've really tried to value. People always tell you, like, enjoy these moments. And a lot of times you get that advice in a moment where you're not really trying to hear it mm -hmm. because your kids have like pissed you off. Deprived. They, they pissed you off to like, you know, well, they, be the, through the night. 18th be power. <laughs> and people say it goes fast. I mean, I've seen it with solace. Mm -hmm. Like I look at pictures of her last year and she looks like a little, like a little baby. I'm like, this is not, this is not my eight year old. So really just trying to lean into these moments. And I don't, I don't always catch myself taking them for granted but when i do i try to stop slow down stop whatever i'm doing and really just kind of immerse myself in whatever moment one of them's trying to have with me so i, I would say that that's uh my favorite part of being a parent right now um did i lose my part no i didn't um what do we got <laughs> Uh, Jill Harper said, how wonderful your wife is getting tickets for the uh, Lakers game. Um, betrayal seems like a lot of people want to talk about the betrayal. It's not a betrayal. It is exactly is. Wait, which one is the betrayal? Tacos or the tickets? The tacos. Oh. I don't care about the the game. I just feel bad because the threat team actually thought that there was a legitimate <laughs> issue. <laughs> I so for anybody who's watching. Who's done on threads? Um, I'm somewhat popular on there. Uh, somewhat, but Jessica was trying to find because Lakers played in Charlotte this past Monday, and Jessica was trying to find me tickets. So I guess she reached out to the community on there to figure out how to go about buying secondhand tickets. So because like, I don't, she didn't that. want me to know. She told everybody who she who wanted to help to block me. No, I didn't. I just told everyone that I blocked you. Oh, and then everybody followed suit. Okay. So, um, so I think anyone who was resharing or, so this was like Sunday, this was Sunday. So I noticed because I, I interact with a lot of the accounts. Um, I noticed that, um, one of the, it was freak time. One of the, the accounts I interact with frequently, they commented on something that I did, but I wasn't following them. And I was like, Oh, well that's weird. So I followed them and then they followed me back <laughs> and then it happened to like three more people. And then Jessica liked something. And then I realized that I wasn't following her and then I followed her. She followed me back. So I was, so I put out a post. I was like, is I was like, this is so random. Like threads has unfollowed three people uh, who I was following. I didn't do it. And I had to refollow them. I said, is anybody else seeing this? And so other people jump in. They're like, yeah, it's been happening. My slow self. I didn't realize that people were just trying to cover up. Yeah. People fact. were covering up the fact that I thought it was a legit glitch. I was like, dang. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> and I didn't, and, and the thread, some of the threads team, like engineers, co uh, coders and people, who, you know, manage product managers, whatever they're on thread. So they see the conversations that are happening. I didn't want to tag them because I wanted to make sure that it was legitimate before I did, but they happened to see the post and one of them was like, okay, you know, looking into it, thanks for flagging. And then like several people were like, yeah, it's happened to me too. It's happened to me too. And these people are all just covering up for the fact that I had no clue. Jessica had blocked me trying to surprise me with Lakers tickets or a ticket to the Lakers game. So Monday we do our, our coffee video. And she's like, and you're <laughs> the community and I conspired against you to surprise you with this Laker take. And I was like, so you're telling me that everybody blocked me and it wasn't a bug. She's like, no, it wasn't a bug. So then <clears throat> I put a thank you out on, on threads. And then, um, one of the, <laughs> one of the team members was like, yo, we had people actually working on this on a Sunday. And I was like, oh, sorry. Well, did they figure out what the bug was? It, yes, you. You were the bug. Yo, it was um, 
it was fun. It was a beautiful thought. And I, I it was extremely thoughtful and I appreciate it. Even though I was out there looking like Boo Boo the Fool. Boo-boo. And everybody knew about everybody knew and about it except for me. Look. And everybody was commenting when I made a post about it. They were like, yo, we were we were rolling with the fact that you thought that there was some sort of bug. And I did too. I I, re- I gave my initial response because I knew that I what I had done. But with the amount of people who were like, "Oh yeah, me too," and on Inst- somebody had said, "And on Instagram," so I was like, "Oh well, it's it, it there legitimately is a bug." But yeah, um, <laughs> sorry, mm. sorry, not sorry. So, Gray Factor, one of the uh, NBA Threads OGs. Mm-hmm. Familiar with Gray? I am. I love Gray. I actually, Gray is one of my favorite people on Threads. Are you allowed to say that as the mayor? He's one of, one of, and I love Gray because Gray is himself. Yes. And, and, and there are a handful of threaders that I feel like I know personally. Gray, Gray is. He's, he, yeah. I feel like I would really enjoy. Oh yeah. Hanging out with Gray. Yeah. Um. He said, "Okay, and this is after he was being silly. He came back." Because I told him I was looking for actual contributions. He said, how about faith in marriage and what it's like to be popular on social media with your spouse? Hope that makes sense. Is that two separate or? I think it's, uh, I, you can treat it as separately. Okay. You want me to go? Sure. So faith, I guess it's like four buckets. Judas? Um, huh? Hmm? Do you just call me Judas? What? I didn't get anything for the what like, are you I talking didn't get about? Like a taco endorsement for throwing you. What are you talking about? You just said Judas. No, I didn't. My ears are amazing. Then why'd you ask me what did I because say? Because I want to confirm that I, I heard you say I Judas. Know what you're talking about. This is a mic. I will go back and hear it. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. God but I also me. added I also added the podcast. Um you you don't remember the finite details. I do. You'd be like, I'm gonna put this in and then you watch the episode and you didn't actually put in what you said. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Benedict <laughs> Arnold. Faith. Uh see you didn't hear that last one. Dongity dong. I called you Benedict Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you wanna have a productive podcast or no? You like the dude who shot Jesse James. But go ahead. <clears throat> okay someone's clearly in their feelings um faith faith is is like my number one priority right now Mm -hmm. um as you know and some people know um i did attend do you need some i should i I just the 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 bourbon went really quickly drink the whole thing so you can have some um i attended a women's retreat Oh, actually, it wasn't a women's retreat, um, but I attended a retreat this this past weekend, and it was, I experienced something unlike all the other retreats I had been to, and it has had me in a place of strongly wanting to strengthen my faith in my relationship with God, but also still remain in this i hate using the word high but like remain in this 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 place this high this you know i feel very confident in my contentment i feel very at peace a lot of people have told me that i look different um Mm. even at the retreat um it was friday and saturday friday night after late in the night um when I kind of have my big moment uh, after that, everyone was like, you look like a kid. You look like a kid. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't understand it, but every, I was even on a zoom on Monday and one of, um, I've never met her, but we we know each other through, um, our community. And, um, she had messaged me like privately in, in the zoom chat. She was like, you look so different. She was like, you, your face is just so different. So um, I think that's a testament to just like everything that I had been dealing with and going through and just being, you know, released of that. But I take my faith very seriously. Um, well, you had been through quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. In, a, in, a, in a very condensed period of time. Mm-hmm. To be. And it, it, I guess it was weighing on me and it showed um, on my face and my, and just in everything. So it was nice to be free of that. But um, 
Yeah, I I just I don't know how to really answer that. Like outside of I do I personally take my faith very seriously. I take my purpose trying to figure out my purpose through faith. Um very serious. Sabotaging your husband with social media. Look, I think I kept you relevant. Um <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't um, realize there was like a whole season where I was building my persona on threads before you ever even like jumped in. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. And I'm the salt bay. Oh, please. But um, no, I, I love being a woman of faith. I love the relationship with God that I have. I love where it's evolving to. Um, it's, this is a tough question to answer because uh, like to answer it honestly, you're, you're going to sound like a quack job, but um, at least for me, I mean, and I don't care if I sound like a quack job, but um, I guess it, I wouldn't be who I am or where I am if it wasn't for my faith. Like that's, that's probably the number one thing that keeps me going that, that um, keeps me here. Because Lord knows we've been through a lot. I've been through a lot individually. We've been through a lot um, as a as a couple. We've been through a lot corporately as a family. So um, if it wasn't for that, like I don't know what the motivation to like mm. to keep pushing on, like where it would come from. Mm. And how do you feel about being popular on social media as a couple? <laughs> are we are we popular? I I feel. I think I think. I would say we, I don't know, but I th- think we are. Um, at least on Threads, I, and even on Facebook. But even though we don't really, but I feel like really on Facebook. Anymore. I feel like Facebook is just a testament to the people we actually know. Yeah. Um, not saying we don't know y'all. We know y'all on Threads. Um, y'all fam, but like people we've actually interacted with, um, face to face air to air uh so they've seen us engaging one another in person Mm. Uh, threads is interesting because everyone is seeing our engagements in a controlled space we're controlling what we're putting out there Mm. um i guess except for taco gate but for the most because i had nothing to do with that for the most part it's even though we're controlling it it is still organic um i don't know that i engage with you any differently on social media than I do in person than I do on threads than I do on Facebook. Um, I, I, maybe I'm meaner to you on social media. I feel like you're meaner in person. You think so? Mm-hmm. I was going to say that, but I wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty tough. I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably a little sweeter on, uh, on social media to you. Yeah, no, there's nothing sweet about it. I said sweeter. But there's no ad, no element of, sweetness oh, bobo highlights i mean it could I, um, I could be like sour like a lemon but i'm more like a grapefruit like a grapefruit still has a little bit of sweetness and bitter tell um, yourself whatever you need to okay i guess i'll be dropping a grenade tomorrow um might as well but i don't know if we, i don't i don't know if we i don't know if i see us as social media popular i feel like we have a group of friends and they know us we know them um and they are entertained by our antics with one another but um i think my my whole stance it's it's always been important in our marriage to depict the imperfection Mm. of our marriage but within that imperfection the fact that we are actual friends the fact that we do have moments where like we don't get along like i i'm not one to want to put up this facade of like oh my gosh dave and jessica are so perfect and they're just you know they never argue blah blah blah. no like we're human um that's something that i I always want to emphasize i do applaud us like when we are in a public space and we don't get along like y'all could give us an award because you wouldn't know that we weren't getting along but we get back in that car and we're just like I'm not talking to you right now, but, (laughs) um, but yeah, I think, I think we have this, I don't want to say curse burden. I don't know that, um, that people like us as a couple. (laughs) That's an interesting way to put it. 
such a burden that people like of so like i just feel like we are kind of obligated to i think marriage sometimes gets a bad rap so i like the idea that you know no we're not a perfect marriage but i think we're a decent example of of, of marriage um so yeah i think in a roundabout way that's my answer i'll let you yeah i think um i think no i'm good i think faith is very important um as you've said that alluded to there's there's been a lot of trying moments in our history <clears throat> uh, from just meeting each other or leading all the way up to and, and through to this point marriage uh and we didn't always lean on each other the way that we do now we had to lean on other things uh, to help us, you know, push through negative thoughts, negative um, things we were hearing in relation to 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 each other. So uh, it's 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 very it's very very critical, I think. Um, and while we don't share, um, we don't. A lot of our faith is individualized. Um, it's not like we, we don't do a whole lot of praying together or um, activities like that. Though I pray for you, um, we don't do a lot of it together. So a lot of our, our spiritual, I guess I'll call them activities, um, are individualized. Um, I do think that that's a critical element uh, for, for us, for us to be where we are. Um, for us to have grown how we've grown. Um, as far as being popular on social media, I, the, the whole the whole thing is still really surreal to me. Um, how NBA threads happened, how th threads happened, NBA threads happened, and then the fact that you actually got into it because you're not really one for jumping into new social media apps. Um, but when I see, you know, my instinct is always to be humble. Um, it's maybe sometimes to a fault. But when I see people who, like, we don't know saying, like, oh, I love you and your wife's videos. Um, I love the way you and your wife, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think it's actually just, like, reassuring <laughs> that, you know, we're, we're very, we're as genuine as we try to be. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we're not perfect. We're not always feeling each other. Um, a lot of times that's moment to moment. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I mean, there's nobody I'd rather, I'd rather be around than you. Like you might, like my dog, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't, I, 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 I can't put into words, um, my appreciation for you, like how invaluable you are to me. Like, I just, I just can't, but I try to exude that through, um, our portrayal of our marriage. Uh, the way I, I talk about you online on the way I take pictures of you in random moments, the way I kind of just talk to you about, how you look, even though you just woke up, you're like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, I'm in my night clothes. What do you mean? I look fine. And a lot of that just, just happens to come out on online. So I, I think, you know, us being popular on social media, I don't know that that's for us to determine. If somebody says it, then I guess it's true. Um, I take it with uh, a great appreciation. Uh, but I take that, I, I take it with, um, a huge amount of responsibility mm -hmm. as well, because um, I want to. I want to for anyone who may be questioning if marriage is for them or is it possible to have, you know, a long sustained marriage. I want to be proof of that, uh, and we are proof of it. So, um, <laughs> I think people may be concerned that we probably go at each other maybe a little bit too much, but that's that's just what we do. And, but we do actually like like and love each other 
But I feel like she picks on me more than I pick on Oh, her. I'm a bully. So I, I am. But no, I think it's it's cool. And the whole social media thing, Threads thing. Threads has shown us a, a lot of love, and I'm I'm grateful, and I appreciate Threads and everybody on their NBA Threads community. I, I appreciate all you guys, um, and I'm 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 just blessed to be a part of the community. We are blessed to be a part of the community. At the end of the day, um, and you know, I always cherish whatever happens. Should Threads shut down tomorrow, I always cherish these seven months that it was a thing. And we got to be a part of NBA Threads. It was, that's just how I feel. Uh, we'll do one more. And then we'll jump into some actual topics. Not actual topics, but things that have been happening. Um, my man, Dimitri, formerly of <laughs> Loose Ball Boys. Talk about how you fit everything in your life. Being parents, working full-time, running a pod, being mayor of NBA Threads, hitting games, in-season tournament finals, and everything else. Sometimes it feel like, feels like you have 70, 78 hours in a single day somehow. Rest assured, <laughs> we do not. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of prioritizing, sacrifice. Um, our, our dynamic has changed a little bit. So whereas we used to be able to do a lot of things together, um, it's usually one or the other or none. Um, but I think intentionality is part of it. Mm. And we go through, we'll go through seasons or part of seasons where it's like, it's been a while since we've done something, just the two of us, um, or done something, just the two of us that wasn't by accident. Um, and now with the new structure, with everybody during the day, you know, in school. Yeah, we are in the house together by ourselves, but like work keeps us occupied. Like you're on one side, I'm on the other. I'm in a meeting. Um, so, you know, we can squeeze in a quick conversation here and there. But for the most part, we're kind of isolated in our own little silos doing our own thing. So it, it just takes a lot of intention. I think out of the two of us, I'm the more active one. I, I mean, I'm part of boards. I'm part of organizations per se, uh, groups. Um, I always have something um, to do. It's actually more abnormal when I don't have something to do. Um, and some days I love it. And some days I'm just like, why am I doing so much? Um, I, I know it's also important for us to have the kids be active in things. So mm -hmm. that also, you know, contributes to whatever time we have, because honestly, during a work week, Monday is literally the only day we have that someone doesn't have something. Um, and I have board meetings the last Monday of every month. So it's only three Mondays a month that we usually are free. Tuesday, we got one kid in piano. Wednesday, we got two kids in dance. Thursday, Friday, we got one kid in dance both days. Um, so our our schedule is is packed is packed yeah and you know you squeeze in a couple extracurricular activities here and there every once in a while david will play basketball on thursday um again i kind of you know i'll have a yelp event i'll have a board meeting event i'll have you know a lunch and learn uh you know a, some i'm somebody's doing something yeah. um and i appreciate that because it keeps us active um because I, I think it's very easy to get into a structure where you're just always home and you're not doing anything and i think it's important to have other areas that you're you're doing stuff and not just isolated to your family but you know engaging other people um but we just get it done that's really what it comes down to like you'll i find that a lot of times by the end of the day the end of the week it's just like whew, yeah, it's an exhale of just wow that was a lot and it's done but goodness that was a lot it can be exhausting it, it definitely can but um it's our bed so that's the bed we sleep in i anticipated getting busier um i just have this feeling in terms of activity and things that we're going to be involved in and have to participate in so it's likely to get busier so if anyone is a babysitter 
knows a babysitter because <laughs> uh, we don't know how to pick babysitters um please give us a shout but yeah no that was it yeah yeah i um i honestly don't know <laughs> maybe we do have 72 hours because not only that but like i work out three mornings a week you know we've got three kids in school we both work we're both managers i manage people you you're you manage like a Operations. Whole, whole process several processes um and like you said we have things that we do outside of you know outside of the house you be more so than i do so yeah i don't know how we how we find the time the the way that i think about it is you just the old adage like you make time for the things you care about so i don't always want to get up at 5 50 in the morning and go to the gym to work out but you know i like the I like the physique and i like the way you be looking at me when you don't think i'd see you looking at me when i got my shirt off so you know I, I keep going lies um I threads heard. threads was like manna from heaven for me in terms of the social media experience i always coveted that i somewhat got on twitter um but it's like a full-blown community and it's something that i was really intentional about doing what i can to make sure that it became a thing and now that it's a thing you know i'm just enjoying it and trying to be as engaged as, as i can and it's one it's funny because uh chip paul i believe that's how you pronounce it had said that i don't post i post differently now than i used to in the beginning like in the beginning i would post about all the teams but now that like a lot of teams are represented i'm a little bit more more focused on the lakers and I didn't even think about it. I was like, you know what? You're kind of right. So I got to get back to my my old roots of like mm -hmm. early NBA threads days. But yeah. but, now been, but now I've everything. been but now I've been but now I've been been labeled as a Lakers fan because like I, I wrote something nice about the Knicks today and somebody quoted me. I was like, and this is coming from a Lakers fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but no, it's just it really is just we we know what's important to each other. Um, I would like playing basketball when I can, but it just so happens that the night that uh, the gym is open where I like to play, usually when Jessica has events, they're on that night mm -hmm. of the week. So a lot of times I'll be like, no, go to your event. I'll watch the girls. Uh, we know, I think we have a good, we have a good, I, good, a good understanding of when the other one needs a release and we were willing to like sacrifice to allow that to happen. So, if that means I play basketball once a month or once every two months, then that's, that's fine to me because I'd rather you go out because of a lot of the responsibilities you have around the house and at work. Uh, you don't really get to let your hair down, so to speak, a lot. So um, so when Vegas was a, was a possibility, Jess was like, go. She was like, I feel like you should go. I feel like you need to be there. So I went. Um I, I spend probably more time on social media than I should. <laughs> you don't say. But um, I enjoy it, you know? And I, from what I can tell, people enjoy either enjoy me or enjoy making fun of me. So either way, um, my, my presence is appreciated. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't... It, it does seem like a lot. And, of course, we have Rush Vibes. Mm -hmm. you know which we haven't done in, in which in, i think i think if anything rushed vibes probably takes the biggest hit yeah um we prioritize not that the pot like we love the podcast not that it's not important but yeah. it's the one variable that i think we have the most control over well we we do and we, we don't have we do and we don't it's it's the one that's most dependent on all the other circumstances yeah. like you don't need me to go to a Yelp event mm -mm. or to go out. I don't need you to go out back and have a cigar. Um, we don't need each other to, we don't need a whole, you know, we can do 
social media while we're working or whatever. But to do this, we have to, the girls have to be asleep. We have to set everything up. No computers. No, no computers. No distractions. No, no distractions. Other than the Lakers came this home right now. Um, I have to edit it. Like it, 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 it's the one thing that requires like soul attention, like one hundred percent attention. Um, and with everything else, because the time of day we have to do it, it, uh, it, it does get the short end of the stick, which is unfortunate. Um, but maybe, maybe our fortunes will, will change. But um, even this, it's still like a. So like a three to five hour process mm -hmm. from setup to shoot to right converting to the, the, the to editing and then putting it out. It's, it's, it still takes about three to five hours. So, but I, I still enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's still something I, I love doing. Um, it kills me when we, a week goes by and we don't, but be tired yeah <laughs> I'd be tired at night man like it's i was starting it's to 11 30, it's 11 37 right now like because you were this is podcast before this and i was yeah. trying to doze and i was like the longer he talks the later it gets the yeah, likelihood it's, we it's, record and he came out and started saying i'm still and i was like dang it it's usually this time of night when we when we do it so it's 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 hard but you know that we're, we're committed to it so um how do we make it work we just do mm -hmm. uh, i don't think that we're super duper organized and super duper like detail oriented and time management i think a lot of it is we just kind of we just kind of get up and go and um we just kind of have uh, collectively and as a unit we kind of just have that that hustle um and we just kind of find ways to make things work and we're not always happy about it like you know, I may not always be happy, but in the moment, but in the, if, at the end of the day, you know, I'm good. And, and I, I think vice versa. So I don't know if that's very insightful, the insightful answer somebody Dimitri was looking for, but that's, that's what we got. So um, let's hit a couple of these. And, uh, We'll get up out of here. We've got 48 minutes. So. Wife. How do you feel about billionaires complaining about Grammy Awards? <laughs> what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't know in that context <laughs> that I do care. Yeah. Um. So, needless to say, we're talking about the Grammys. Yeah, talking about Jay Z uh, getting up on the stage, receiving an award, and then taking the Grammys to task for never giving his wife a album of the year award. Yeah. Even though she has the most Grammys ever. Mm -hmm. So I Sunday Celtics played. Watch the Celtics play. Yeah, we don't care about them. And then I happened to be trying to find something else to watch. Didn't really feel like finding another game. <laughs> Or maybe none of the games really stood out to me. So when, you know, I, I did the the search on what was on, I saw that the, the Grammys were, were on maybe like an hour in. So I was like, you know what? I'll put on the Grammys. We've got our kid. She's eight now. So that's kind of the age. Not old enough whatsoever to be watching. That's kind of the age that I was watching the Grammys, you know, to see NSYNC and all the other. Parents were terrible. You know, Christina Aguilera. You know where I was at eight? I was in church. No, you were not. I absolutely wasn't. <laughs> like the lies. I was watching Happy Days. Um, you were probably Nick watching wrestling. It's a Nick and Night. No, I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling. Oh yeah, that's why you got your brothers in trouble. Oh, yeah, I would always come. They they would be watching it, and I would come down in the room, and I'd be like, "Hey guys, what are you watching?" And mom would be like, "Change the channel." They'd be like, "Damn it, David, <laughs> go away." I'm sorry, boy. Such a little brother. Yeah. Um, so put it on. Kind of took it as like a bonding moment. Um, realized that I don't know any of these artists and she knows a lot of them she knows their songs everything so i think i finally sent her to bed it after of course taylor swift and won her award and announced her new album and i had to listen and pretend april, april 19th david april. and i had to listen to like oh my gosh we're getting a new album i have to it was ridiculous so um i told, you, I told you to cancel the internet 
we literally survive off of the internet. We could cancel food before we could cancel the internet. <laughs> um, so, <coughs> excuse me. So watching and then, you know, what is it? The Dr. Dre Lifetime Achievement Award, something like that. Missed it. Uh, and I, know, I didn't see any of the Grammys. Actually. I know. the. I'm just the name of the award, which is controversial in itself because Dr. Dre is is controversial um but I'm talking about Dr. Dre like that. i mean he is i'm talking about Dr. Dre like that like people question especially black women question why they named the award after him um like they could just named it like the musical achievement award that would have him after dr Dre. but dr Dre is questionable um you know who else is questionable your mama <laughs> i guess so <laughs> I guess so. Ma, you questionable. So, um, so he gets up there, he takes Blue Ivy and Who I did not know was Blue Ivy Blue when Ivy. I saw the video. I was like, who's this random chick standing next to Davey? Perfect collaboration of Jay Z and Beyonce. If she's next to Jay Z, she looks like Jay Z, but you see Beyonce. Mm. If she's next to Beyonce, you see Beyonce, but she looks like Jay Z. And it's so interesting how when she was born like when she was a baby these people called her ugly and she is she's like she is such a beautiful young lady and she's like she's not even peaked like she i think she's she's 12 or 13 like she's still a child mm. but like this child has grammy awards this child has gone on tours and performed <laughs> like she she's it's it, you realize how old you are when you're looking at somebody's kid that you have known whether directly or indirectly since they were born. Yeah. Like I was watching a Kia commercial that Draymond is in and there was a little girl and I was like, is that his daughter? And then I remembered I watched the parade when they won the championship. What, like how many years ago was that? Two. No, 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 no. This was a while ago. Oh, okay. He was holding a newborn baby. Mm. Cause I remember that baby. I might've still been in college. That, no, I wasn't. Um, like uh, out of college, <laughs> but no, because well, I. Well, you've been in you've been in college different stages. One of my college roommates had commented on my post. That's why I thought I was still in college. Got it. Um, because he was at the parade, thousands of people screaming, and he's holding this newborn baby that's asleep. And I remember my post. I said, "I want to have the peace that that baby has with all this chaos going around. This baby's asleep." And I was like, "There's no way that this is the same baby." Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so Jay-Z goes up. He accepts his speech. And <laughs> I've seen some awkward speech, speeches, acceptance speeches. That one was one, was one um, in terms of like the discomfort it created in the room. Yeah. But the discourse that was created on social media was very interesting. I made a post. My post was simple. I said, Jay-Z just made a lot of people uncomfortable. And it was... I had to really approach it with the like engage or don't engage. Cause some people were, yeah. some dude came on my post and he was like, stop dick riding Jay Z. And I wanted to be like, okay there buddy. Like, so who's this? I don't know. You have to go find it. I chose not to engage. Mm. Um, but like I went onto his page and nothing he has is in English. So I was like, you picked mine to write something in English. But anyway, David, it's not that serious. It's really not that serious. No, I'm just, I'm just um, so there was some, like, it was interesting how polarizing the response was my overall opinion. Jay-Z has a great point. Um, Beyonce is the most decorated there. It logistically, it does not make sense that she does not have an album of the year award. Mm. Um, and I don't know. <sighs> It's interesting because he took his his opportunity to give his speech for himself and he gave it to his wife. So it's very sacrificial in that sense. Um, and I think people see the beauty. Got 155 of likes. I know. Mm -hmm. I literally said nothing. <laughs> um, but I don't know that I have an opinion of it. I felt for Blue Ivy. I felt like she was very uncomfortable. I'd be uncomfortable, um, which is so cute because this is the same girl who was dancing on stages all summer long no. but um you know i don't know that jay-z would have gotten another opportunity to be on the grammy stage to release a statement like that to create um so much traction so he took that opportunity 
Now, we obviously don't know the conversations, like, the conversations behind the scenes. So, you know, that could have been, like, a Will and Jada moment where Jada was like, I didn't even know I was your wife and you over here. Like, Beyonce could have been like, I didn't even know you cared. Mm. But um, some the perspectives are interesting. Some people are like, you know, he's took up for his wife. You know, he, he he's protecting her, blah, blah, blah. Other people wanted to bring up, you know, the fact that he's cheated on her. And, um, well, I mean, that was really the biggest thing. The fact that he's cheated on her. The fact that Blue Ivy was up there and she's been made uncomfortable. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway I have about it is... And this is just in general, and this is probably part of my like enlightened weekend um, rollover. But I can't imagine. I mean, I don't condone um, infidelity or affairs or anything. Um, and most people don't. Some mm. people do. Most people don't. But Beyonce is well aware that Jay Z allegedly had an affair. I don't know the details. I don't get into that mess. Um, she's still married to him, which means. I assume she's forgiven him. And I, my biggest sympathy is the fact that that's all that seems to be brought up with their marriage. The fact that he had an affair. She's with, she's still with him. They're always going to bring up Becky with the good hair. Maybe she shouldn't have thrown it in a song. I'm, I'm not here to judge, but I couldn't imagine the idea that like I'm in a marriage infidelity happened i chose to forgive this person yet no one other people have not forgiven him mm. and they're you they're they're always going to bring that up forever and ever and ever everything he does everything i do it's kind of like if people, you, people are always going to bring up tacos but you don't like tacos i think tacos are overrated overrated kind of equates to don't like so now people always bring that up so that's equivalent to people be like what did the freak time say to me today? Not taco, but not taco about something. <laughs> and then I talked about, I posted about burgers and then, uh, oh my gosh, what's his name? Uh, I know you talking about. Um, yeah, he was, he was, he was like, I'm surprised he likes burgers. But anyway, um, so I don't, I don't know that I have an opinion of it. I'm, I'm always adjacent to the T like to the deep information. So yeah. I know Beyonce is most decorated. Um, and I know that it's a thing that, you know, Taylor Swift, you know, just is like right on her heels. Um, I think a lot of people assume that Jay-Z was referring to Taylor Swift when mm. he said, you know, he, like, yo. yeah, yeah like, yo, I don't guy. think that was the case. No. Um, you know, they were talking about the lemonade album. They were talking about, what, Rena renaissance wasn't the mm. renaissance album i thought that was the name of the tour not the album um so i think people were just trying to find an issue where there wasn't uh but you know he's a man he's standing up for his woman and i i was i've been like dabbling in my bible a little bit more and i was reading the story of the part of the bible of matthew of joseph and mary where joseph was like oh you pregnant so I went out mm -hmm. and I can't remember what scripture it is, but it says Joseph was a righteous man. So he wanted to leave her in secret. So even though like the angel hadn't visited him and been like, yo, we, we need you to step in and be a step daddy. I, just, I think about that skit, that TikTok skit, <laughs> the pie, fresh baked pie. <laughs> How did you make this? We don't have an oven. God help me. <laughs> Joseph, do you see how that sounds, Mary? <laughs> now you gotta add that in there. You gotta throw it into the episode. You are, baby. Fresh baked pie. Just for you. Where did you get this? I baked it. From scratch. We don't have an oven. God help me. <sighs> Joseph, please. You see how that sounds, Mary? Um, the point that I'm making is God, man, God help me. And I don't even know if it even <laughs> ties together, but I don't know. It just stood out to me because I read it earlier this week where it's just like, you know, because Joseph was a righteous man. I ain't saying Jay-Z is a righteous man. I don't know his business like that, but it says because Joseph was a righteous man, he was trying to separate from Mary in secret. So not yeah. make it a public thing and embarrass her. Um, 
And I kind for some reason that connected to this whole scenario with, you know, Jay Z and the Grammy where, you know, he's a man. He's a, this is his wife. It's his it's a man's job. If you're a traditionalist, um, which I am. He, he is married to this woman. His job is to protect her um, and to defend her when he feels she is due defending. Like mm. you are supposed to defend your wife's honor, your woman's honor. Mm. Um, and that was his moment. That was his opportunity. And I think he did that. Yeah. Um, does, do I think it's going to change anything? No, because I think, you know, all of these award shows and these academies and these secret organizations, I think they're all corrupt. Um I think they have agendas. They're corrupt. Yeah, in terms of like the people, the deciding bodies are not diverse. Mm. They'll try to make them diverse. You know, we got all these acronyms, um, but at the end of the day, you still have the same people who have the final say. Mm. They're they're making decisions based off of what appeals to them, what they know, Mm. um, what they like. So, you know, I don't know that it's going to make a difference if she wins album of the year next year. I don't think she's dropping an album this year. I think it would solely be because he said something and embarrassed everyone. Mm. But um, I, I don't, I, I take it with a grain of salt. Like, you know, congrats that he won his award. I think Jay-Z has done some amazing things for music. Um, but y'all gave him an award. You put him on stage. You gave him a mic. It's like, what do you expect? It'd be like giving Kanye a mic. That's the last yeah. person that you should give a mic to. Cause you don't know what he's going to say. And that's the danger of it. Yeah. So I know I went on and on, but I also feel like I gave you an opportunity to view the game. I mean, you did make a little bit of a run. Um, uh, you know, it's funny. We, uh, in this society, we feel like rich people only care about their money. We call them superficial. And we, think that they don't care about things that the average person would care about. But, you know, when we have, as a regular person, if I'm training for something or I'm competing for something, and the only way to win is if a panel of judges agree that my performance or my piece or my whatever it is, my, my way, if I'm weightlifting, um, is good enough. And I don't get that, you know, it matters to me because it's my, it's my craft. It's, it's something I pour into. Um, and I just think it's funny how we want, we hate rich people and celebrities because there's such a disconnect, <laughs> but when they exhibit, feelings and emotions and opinions on things that everyday people tend to care about in their own lives. We say, well, you're a billionaire. Like, why should you care? So I thought that it was funny that people think Beyonce shouldn't care about the fact that she hasn't won album of the year because she's a billionaire. Well, what does that matter? Like, this is her, this is her gift. Mm -hmm. This is her craft. This is what she puts out into the world. And she works, I would imagine very hard at it. So she wants to, get the validation of having the best album. Like there's, it's no different than sports, no different than competing at anything. Um, and I think there should be a conversation about how can the person with the most individual Grammys never have one album of the year because every part of every piece of a Grammy individual Grammy that was one went into making an album. So I think, I think, she has a he and she has a legitimate gripe mm-hmm. and <laughs> as far as the backlash i mean anytime black people <laughs> speak up about oh it's a problem equality or call out something for being wrong or unjust the system then it's 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 an issue so i mean that's that's a, a tale as old as time so that's not really surprising that people were upset about it, but Jay Z is Jay Z, and he's he's gonna be Jay Z, and he's gonna be wealthy. So I think he can afford to say these things, say that certain people shouldn't be in the category. People get upset, then that's they gonna have to sit in their feelings for a while. But um, I didn't have an issue with it. Uh, I even with everything I just said, I think it takes a, a bit of courage to get up there and then say what he said. 
Uh, I love hearing Jay-Z speak. I love hearing him speak candidly <laughs> and matter of factly like he did. He's an amazing storyteller. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Jay-Z's yeah, I, smart. Yeah. I think well, you, you have to be no, but no, you don't, yeah, but I think we've, you don't stumble in truly we've pigeonholed certain people that if you're in a particular craft, you lose overall intelligence. Mm. So like athletes, rappers, actors, they're yeah. not seen. I don't, I don't know any dumb billionaires. I, I don't honestly, I was just, I just think about the people we watch on a regular basis. Like Charles Barkley was on earlier and I, I have this weird disdain <laughs> for Charles Barkley. You and a lot of other people. Yeah. And I, it clicked with me that this is a persona. Like yeah. Charles Barkley is, is a, is an intelligent person. Right. But doesn't, allow himself to be perceived that way Mm -hmm. which could also be part of his intelligence that like he's able to to manifest this and the reason why it clicked with me that he probably is very intelligent like he literally has a show on cnn now with gail king i haven't watched it yet so i I haven't heard like the commentary i only ever see or hear charles barkley in reference to basketball so for all i know all his knowledge is only affiliated to basketball. Right. But like you think of a Shaq where, you know, Shaq doesn't always give off like the most intelligent either, but he's decorated academically business wise. He's decorated. He's yeah. He, is he a sheriff? He's a cop. I thought he was a sheriff. He's, he's law enforcement. Like your boy. Oh, from Georgia. <sighs> With the sun. Oh, uh, Wait, the, 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 he's got the bag. Oh, uh, Herschel Walker. Herschel. That's your boy. Herschel. He's our boy. I can't say Herschel Walker. Um, Father's so, not at home. And I think Father. I was like, I know he says something about dad. Where are you? <laughs> so, you know, li- I do appreciate Jay Z speaking. Even like, honestly, most rappers, because linguistically to be a rapper, yeah. it, it takes a lot of skill. You're, you Rob have to be, you have to be metaphorically skilled. You have to understand the English language. You have to be able, being a musician in general, you yeah. have to be able to use words, not just artistically, but intellectually. Like I used to think, um, I remember one time we were listening to Bob Marley and he's got one line, um, you make me feel like a sweepstakes winner. Mm. And my mom and I were having a conversation. I was young, maybe like 13. And I think like, you know, sometimes you'll hear a song over and over again, but sometimes you'll really hear it and the lyrics will click. Um, Like it's hard to yell with the barrel in your mouth. Um, It clicked with her. And she was like, you make me feel like a sweepstakes winner. And I think she was just so impressed linguistically that he was he put those words together um so listening to jay-z speak outside of the context of of rap of of music of performing Mm -hmm. like you realize like you know these people these people are intelligent like Mm -hmm. they are they they come equipped to use words and to understand the english language it's just their execution of it doesn't always align with how people feel intelligence is supposed to be displayed for the world. You know, to you're supposed to be an academic and, you know, you write things down, blah, blah, blah. But like, this is intelligence. You had said something that triggered a thought in me in terms of like the humanization of a billionaire, essentially. But also I think about in comparison to us, going back to like, he's a husband. I can't imagine like, yes, they're billionaires. She's decorated in awards, but I'm sure she went into that Grammy the same way I go into interviews thinking I like, I killed it. Mm. This job is, is mine. And her not getting it. Like we didn't, we don't know what happens after she leaves that, that arena Mm. with him. We don't know, you know, how many tears he had to wipe off of her face, how he had to be there to support his wife in her pain, in her disappointment. Mm. We just see, you know, the perfection of the outfit on stage, the performer, but we forget that there's a human behind it. And I know how many times, regardless, whether it be a job or just life in general, you've had to be my strong pillar and you've had to bear the burden of my pain, my disappointment. So 
it's not necessarily like the same type of apples to apples, but it's still apples to apples. So he got an opportunity, which I know if there was any room full of all the people who I have applied to jobs for and they rejected me and somebody gave you a mic, you probably would do something very similar. They don't take me out of there. I know. I know. So I can't say that I disagree with it. I think he did the husband thing. I, I think it would have been, I think people would have also been disappointed if he got up there, thanked them, thanked him for his award and, and left. Mm -hmm. They would have held that against. So I think it's just a damned if you do damned if you don't. Yeah. Um, I also think we just live in a society where people just want to complain. Yes. People like to complain, especially about things that are out of reach to them. Yes. I agree. Yeah. So speaking about um, complaining, and celebrities, I need you to help me figure out what in God's name got into your boy. That had his nether regions all over Cat Williams' internet this week. Did you did you accidentally watch? No, but I heard about it, bro. What you mean? But did you look at it? I thought I thought he was releasing new music. So you watched the video? I got on the other. Uh, you, you, so wait, you thought he was releasing music, so you went to watch a video? I didn't go to watch a video. I went to see like what the name of the album was going to be or the mixtape. I went to get context. Mm. So I just typed in Drake mm. and then went to latest or whatever. Mm. And there was. And you watched it. Out of shock. Oh, you were shocked. So that's why you could. My phone. You could look, oh my gosh. Look away from but it. then to get out of the app, I had to like look at the screen. It was traumatic. Interesting. Yeah. I think it was I, I think it was all planned mm. um, because there was a somebody was recording it mm. so I also watched for research for, for research purposes so we could discuss oh yeah um, is that what it was because I'm an investigative podcaster um, I don't I per I posted on threads that I think Jay Z I mean uh, Drake woke up and was like Jay Z cannot tr trend for another day so I have to out, yeah, out trend Jay Z like, let me just post it up here yeah. I've seen some hilarious posts um, somebody posted a picture of Drake and then a quote that said I wasn't what did he say I wasn't keeping my meat from the world. <laughs> Uh, I was something the world for my me. I don't. I can't remember, but I was cackling. Um, yeah, I. I mean, I yeah. think. I think it was scripted. I think all of these Maybe. leaks are apparently you. You dropping bombs about me about me and tacos on 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 threads. I guess Drake decided to put his meat. <laughs> On social media. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a different world. It, it is. Crazy. It is. Um, I can't imagine. I mean. Why? Yeah. Why? For what? Clout? Attention? It means that much, huh? I guess so. It's a drug. Yeah, I guess so. Um, I I I don't have anything else, but I, I don't I don't want to not mention it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of the, for the sake for the sake of the algorithm. Um, Nikki Haley. Next. Yeah. Um. As Trump said she's she's not in second place she's in last um, he's such a jerk he is he's, he's horrible he's such a jerk 
but he is such a professional troll. Uh, I learned from him. You know that. So did you hear about this? Did you, you read up on it? You told me about it. I did. So Trump was not on the ballot. They had the the primary in AC. And uh, where was it? Arizona. It was was it Arizona? New Mexico. No, it was uh, Colorado. Nevada. Oh dang, I was close. I was gonna get there. Yeah, yeah but they're like a tri They're like a quadruple state. There's a point where all of them. So Trump wasn't on the ballot. Thanks for raising your voice. To just, I, I, need, I need to stop because you're you're not helping your own case. Um, I think it was Nevada, Colorado, Arizona. I, I would have gotten to Nevada. I'm trying to figure out who else was on the because it was her. Didn't you say Tim Scott, who I didn't know was still eligible to He's be on not, the ballot? He's not, but you can still be. He dropped out, but you can still be on the ballot if even if you drop out. Mm. Um. But basically, Trump wasn't there. A couple other candidates were there. She got 30%. Um, but lost to none of these candidates option. <laughs> Which. <laughs> um, I wish you had waited till the recording to tell me so that my initial reaction from when you told me um could have been captured on camera when i think of nikki haley i think of that gif from rocky yeah. where creed is fighting and his coach is like throwing the towel yeah that's how i feel about nikki haley she's not one she's not running for me um she don't care about me or my kind. So I don't have any skin in the game when it comes to her. I, th I think I've already accepted that Trump is going to be the Republican candidate. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's just like, girl, just give it up. Like, give it up and start auditioning like everybody else is. Um, yeah. Because that's what's going on. You've got people kissing his butt trying to get cabinet positions. So, like, I would say she could go to be the first Indian American VP, but Kamala already took that. So thank you, Kamala. None, um, none of these candidates got 47,134 votes, 63%. Of, out of the entire state. Of out of all, that is 74,000 votes cast, I guess. That's all the people. Who voted. Um, I know Nevada. Has Nikki Haley got 30%. Mike Pence got 3.9%. No. Yes. Uh Tim Scott got one point four and John Castro, whoever the hell that is, got two hundred and fifty nine votes. What point about three uh, percent? Vivek. No. He's, no. No. He's playing. Um, Jimmy Neutron. Um that was probably culturally insensitive. So to, for Trump to not even be on the ballot and she still They didn't write in Trump? Couldn't they have just written him in? I guess they could have, but I think he <laughs> Trump was out there and, and said something about your primary vote doesn't mean anything is her car. I guess there's a caucus in, in Nevada as well. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, she needs to just throw it in at this point. Like she's not doing, I don't think she's doing anybody any favors. Um, and I think she's reducing her odds of getting a cabinet position, uh, for Trump. Mm. So I really think like, give it in start kissing his butt shoot for vp so then when he gets indicted and goes to jail like she could just get the presidency that way yeah i think that's her her likely option but um he's got her on his hate list now so i don't know if you can get off of it without like really kissing his butt yeah i'm not really down with uh somebody who would say this country was never racist and racism had nothing to do with dylan roof mm -hmm. going into that church and murdering nine people yeah. so um she may be a fantastic politician and she may have done some things as an ambassador and whatever else she's position she's held but i'm i'm good yeah i don't think so i, I personally it's like you're torn when you are of another race in terms of the brackets that you have to support um, I think that's one of the things that if you're white, you kind of can float like 
you can be white and like, oh, I'm gonna support the black guy. I'm gonna support the white guy. I'm gonna support the Hispanic guy, whatever. But like with us, it's more intentional. Like we have like you watch Family Feud. If there's the white family and the black family, like you got to root for the black family, like because we're black. It's like your default. You got to. And then when they give the bad answer, you're like, dang it, the black people just always, yeah. you know, when they talk about a crime on the news, you're like, please don't be black. Please don't be black. I don't know that like I don't know that white people would be like, oh, don't be white. Don't be white. I think it's just, you know. Well, okay. It's yeah. okay. Um, so when it comes to politics, I think the I can only speak from a, a woman's perspective, but you know, I fall into a lot of categories. I am yeah. black. I am a woman. I am uh, the child of immigrants. Um, I am a mother. Uh, I'm a working professional. So there are so many things that I have to take into account. And of course, you know, we're still, because America is still behind, we're still in a place of first where, you know, 2024, you're, you're still having the first black, the first Latino, the first Asian, um, it's ridiculous, but you're still ha a country that's been established with all of these different ethnicities. You're still reaching the first. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stand with her because I kind of wanted her. I wanted, we're due for a female president. She's not the first female. She is not the one who should be the first female president. Um, but you, I kind of felt like of all the candidates, she was the lesser of all the evils. And then I think I really, because now she is in the spotlight, I'm starting to hear her speak more. And I'm, I'm realizing that a Jay Z, a Charles Barkley, a Kanye might have more intelligence than she does. Um, I also am still in this conundrum and because she has definitely been able to mask away or, or hide away her ethnicity. In my opinion, she doesn't walk in it. You know, she, I believe she's married to, I think he's, I think her husband's white. Her, her daughter looks like she would be white. Um, so she's got a white, an Anglo last name, you would say. So it was a long time when people would say she's the first Indian governor, whatever. I assumed Native American because I had never seen her. And this is years ago when she was actual governor of South Carolina. So she was in the news frequently because we're in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So I assume she was Native American for the longest time. It really wasn't until the presidential election and recently that I saw a picture of her parents and realized like, oh, no, you're Indian Indian. Yeah. Um, but she doesn't walk in that. And I think it's intentional because she recognizes that she can appeal better to the base that she needs if she's not leaning into her ethnicity mm. whereas you have like a kamala which is you know I, I i say they're almost equivalent they're both you know they both have indian mothers uh, granted kamala's father is jamaican so she, she's half black but you've got a kamala who is who leans into her race she wants to emphasize like this is who i am and this is part of what makes me the American that I am. And then you've got this polar opposite of Nikki, who was just kind of like, I'm Nikki Haley from South Carolina. Like those are her descriptors and that's mm. it. But yeah, I think she needs to go have a seat. Uh, how y'all say it down here? Set down. Uh, she needs to set down, set down. Um, Cause she's, she's, she's wasting money. Like I think everybody knows she's not going to be the presidential candidate. Everybody over her. Everybody. No, she knows. She knows. And I don't know what miracle she's expecting and not saying miracles can't happen. Um, I don't want this miracle to happen, but um, I think the country, the world, the people know that the, the Republican candidate is Donald Trump, which is so difficult for me to say. Actually, it wasn't difficult for me to say it's uncomfortable to say because I didn't think we'd be here in 2024, but here we are. Yeah. So, you know, save this money. Like put it away and, you know, come up with your 2028 campaign. Um, Cause God forbid Donald Trump wins. He would only be able to do one term cause he's already done one term. Correct. Or is it, how does that work in America? Um, you can only do a combined two terms as a president. 
You can only serve eight years, two terms. Two terms, but you know, he might, he might try. You trying to? He already tried to. Look, everyone's got passports. That's mm. my advice to everybody: get a passport, especially if you are the child of immigrants and you were the first to be born in this country. I think the only exception I think could be if he like. If you came as uh, like a VP, VP and then the like the president, president dies, you know, something like that, then you could effectively. Oh my God. That'd be a plot. That would be a Netflix series. But I don't think it's ever happened. Yeah. So. It's about to. No, it's not. Um, Wait for it. Yeah. Um, Nikki can go sit down somewhere. So there are a couple of topics we didn't get to, um, but that's okay. What are they? Um, the Kelsey fade and Killer Mike being arrested, but uh, I think Travis Kelsey already put that that thing to rest. Look, so that black really girlfriend that Travis Kelsey had, she I feel like she instilled some intelligence in him because that could have gone. I think she just, I think he just dated a black woman. That could have gone sideways. He knew. He knew. I think he, he was educated. Yeah. I think he knew Not he did. I think he knew he didn't invent the fade before know, he dated. But he knew because of prior education, he knew not to lean into that because he could have leaned into that. You saw Kim K has done it with like the cornrows and all of that. And they tried to like make it seem like it was not the ethnic thing that it was. Travis, Travis ain't stupid. Sure. You see that proverb, <laughs> the proverb I called out. I didn't invent that. I just asked for that. It was very good. It's a wise man. I enjoy. I enjoyed that. It's a wise man. The book of Kelsey. Um. So we need to wrap. We do because it's late. Killer Mike got arrested. He did get arrested after he won three Grammys. But the alter- yeah. altercation took place before. Yeah, I think he was arrested. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Some mystery. It was a citizen's arrest. I'm like, who gonna try to citizen arrest Killer Mike? That's a big dude. Yeah. Um. Oh wow! They didn't give him. What they overturned the file? Interesting. Um, yeah, we need to wrap because I got to edit this, and I don't know if I'll edit tonight, but I definitely want to get it up at some point tomorrow. Yes, sir. You want to take us out? You want me to do it? You do it. I'm not, I have not mastered taking us out. So, uh, thanks again to everyone who's rocked with us up to this point. Anybody who's new, we appreciate you, and we definitely appreciate the folks on NBA Threads. Uh, you can find us here on YouTube for the video. We're obviously on Apple and Spotify and uh, YouTube Music, I believe. And um, we do have a website, rushvibes.com. If you want to go there, check out the episodes. And don't forget to leave us a review. If you listen to us on Apple, Spotify, and you can definitely like it and subscribe here on YouTube. Share with a friend. Share with a friend. And thank you to everyone in NBA Threads, whoever shares out. Yes, you the best. Um, our stuff, we, we really appreciate you guys. and always showing the love um other than that hopefully we'll be back next week i think this is episode 98 your guess is as good as 96 well. between 96 97 and 98 so we're getting really close to 100 you gotta pop a bottle of champagne really close i'm trying to decide if we want to guess for 100 or if we just want us i think we should do a recap for 100 a recap okay. maybe like pull our favorite episodes, mm. um, rebuttal things. Like there are some things I'll listen back to and I'm like, man, I meant to say it like this and I hope people interpret it like that. Yeah. I mean, it's work, but, but yeah, our favorite topics that we, we spoke about, our most popular episodes, why we think they were more, we could brainstorm and have fun with it. But if you all have any suggestions for 100, please, please, please let us know. Yeah, it took us four years to get there. Did it? It's 2024. When did we start this? Uh, we started mid-2020. That's a three. Three years. Three and change. But it's been fun. It has been. A little pandemic project still going. All right. We'll catch y'all next week. Peace. Doo -doo. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. I done came way too far, can't stop me now I done came way too far, can't stop me now
I done came way too fucking stop me now. I done came way too fucking stop me now. Stop me now. Stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too fucking stop me now.